something to keep them excited, something to keep them entertained. Amen. Yeah. Always looking for something new yeah. because if it's not new and fresh, it just doesn't hold their attention. Amen. Jesus just doesn't seem to be enough anymore for the modern day church as we know it. Amen. They have to have everything else going on. Everything else has to be lifted up. Man has to be glorified. Last week we preached part of this and I tell you what it's still rolling over in my soul this morning Amen. hallelujah it's all I could get yesterday it's all I could get the day wow. before until I get something else I can't give you nothing else amen wow. hallelujah all right. but I heard a week or two ago I heard part of a sermon and only part of it because it was making me sick I had to turn it off yeah but the name of it was the power of I am all right. and it wasn't talking as I told you Sunday it wasn't talking about the great I am. Uh -huh. It was talking about the power within us yeah. to profess and to proclaim our destiny with our own words. All right. I am yes. great. I am yes. able to do all things. I am. Uh -huh. And certainly we are not supposed to sit around and beat ourselves up and say that we're nothing and a piece of trash. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But to glorify self above God is uh, taking things to a whole other level. Amen. Right. And that's exactly what the power of positive thinking and the power of positive confession does. Amen. Right. It takes you to a level above. Well, it goes all the way back to what caused Lucifer to fall in the first place. Amen. Right. I will ascend above the Most High. I will go higher than God. Amen. Right. I will get the glory. And oh, man, great. still today. Right. Same, and that's what he tempted Eve with right. in the garden. Amen. You will be like God Amen. if you eat of this fruit. Right. So it made her think, well, I will be. See, I can can anytime I is involved, we get in trouble. Amen. Yes. Anytime I, me, my mind is yeah. involved, we get in trouble. Come on. I told you last week, if the man that you're following or the woman that you're following spends more time exalting self. Then they do Jesus, get away from them. Amen. Because they've already missed the mark. Amen? That's right. So the great I am, and the talking about self, the great self doctrine, I guess, yeah. is not a new thing. It's Amen. been around for a long, long time. Right. Then someone sent me an invitation to a revival, a three-day conference. Mm -hmm. All these great speakers. Mm -hmm. And the theme of the revival was one word. And that word was prosper. And I told you they might have had my attention if they'd have said the theme of the revival was one word and that one word was Jesus. But when they said the one word that they were going to be talking about the most, you see, when you get around people, you'll find out exactly where their heart is. Yeah. I don't have to judge you. I don't have to. All I have to do is let you open your mouth. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, yeah. the mouth speaketh. Amen. Amen. Come on, and if we spend more time right. talking about self, right. I can do this. Yeah. My, me, uh -huh. myself, yeah. my power, my ability. Come on, say it. Somebody's on the throne of our heart and it ain't Jesus. Amen. Amen. So all we have to do is talk and yeah. we will tell on ourselves. Come on, to find out exactly where our relationship is with the Lord. Right. And if all you got to offer me is the prosperity doctrine, Amen. I don't want it. Amen. If all you have to offer me today is the doctrine of the power of positive thinking, I don't want it. Come on. Because I don't care how positive you think about yourself. Mm. If you leave Jesus out, right. you are positively going to think yourself right into hell. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. You think about yourself all the way to hell. Come on. You think about how great you are all the way to hell. Amen. You think about how powerful you are within yourself oh. all the way to hell. Yes, sir. You will not get to heaven without Jesus. Amen. Exactly. You will not get there without, and I'm getting ahead yes, of myself, so you will not get there without denying self. Come on, brother. Amen. Come on. That's because true. if you allow self to rule, yeah. self will take you to hell. Amen. Amen. That's true. If you allow self to sit on the throne of your heart, on, self will take you to hell. Amen. Amen. It's all about, in the day that we live, it's all about esteeming, the self esteem. Right. It's all about exalting self. Right. I got news for you. Come self on. 
is the thing you don't want to exalt. Hey. Self is the thing that you need to be dying out to. Right. Self is the thing that tries to keep you from going on. Amen. Self is the thing that tries to convince you it's easier to sit on the couch than it is to get ready for church. Amen. Self is the thing that makes you think that you need as much glory as the next preacher or you need as much glory as the pastor or you need the spotlight as much as the song leader. Self will talk you into hell. Come on, Brother Billy. Amen. Come on, preach to us. And we read this scripture last week. Paul speaking to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 and 12. He said, For the witch calls... I also suffer these things. Yeah. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed yeah. and am persuaded right. that I am more than able. That's not what Paul said. Paul said, I am persuaded that He is able to keep that which I have committed unto Him against that day. I told you last week, I'll tell you again this morning. I'll probably tell the people at Sassafras Grove tonight, whenever I preach there tonight, this as well. The message that I have for you is not a new revelation. It's not some deep mystery. Although the church has covered it up so much, it probably is deep and a mystery to most of them. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. But the message that I have for you today is the old, old story that Brother Tyler was talking about. Amen. 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 It's the old, old story that, that Isaiah proclaimed when he said, A virgin shall conceive and bring forth a child, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. See, your self-help will not help people. Amen. Amen. It won't help them into heaven. It'll help them into hell. Your self-esteem will not exalt people to the level that God wants them exalted in the spiritual realm. Only preaching Jesus and Him crucified I told you, the Apostle Paul was a learned man. He was not stupid, Brother Sleece. He knew the law better than the disciples did. He knew the Torah. He knew the, the thing. He was a religious man. He felt like the things he was doing as Saul was a, a, a favor to God. He was killing people that he thought were blasphemers. He was not a stupid man. But when it came down to where the rubber met the road, Paul said, I've determined to know this thing and this thing alone among you. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. I've been preaching for 27 years. I've heard a lot of sermons. I've heard a lot of doctrines. I've heard a lot of, of, of movements and a lot of denominations have tried to get me to jump in with them. But I stand here today 27 years down the road from where I started and I proclaim to you today that I still believe Jesus Christ and Him crucified is enough. I believe that's the message. I believe that's the last day message. I believe that's the message that still saves souls, still sets demon captive free, still sets people free, still heals, still heals them, amen, still looses them and lets them free today. I believe the message of Jesus is the same today as it always has been. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe that it's still Jesus Christ and Him crucified that is the hope for a lost and a dying world. I still believe it's Jesus Christ, the message of Jesus Christ and Him crucified that's the only hope for a lost and and dying nation that we live in today. I still believe that Jesus is the only hope for our president. I still believe that Jesus is the only hope for Congress. I still believe that Jesus is the only hope for our government. I still believe that Jesus is the only hope for you. Exactly. Amen. Praise God. You can go and lay on the rubber couch. You can take your pills. You can go to your denominational leaders. You can join up with the religion. You can do your works. But until you realize it's Jesus and nothing else, I will look into the hills from which cometh my help. And my help comes from Jesus. Until you realize that Jesus is where your peace comes from. Jesus is where the hope can be found. Absolutely. Amen. Jesus. As y'all tell, this stirs me up. Amen. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Let it rip. Oh, let's talk about Praise Jesus. Yeah. The King of Kings. And see, we've heard enough. Wow. We've heard enough about your denomination. Wow. We've heard enough about your talent. Wow. We've heard enough about your the, the, the masses that you claim Amen. to have led to Jesus. We've heard we heard enough about your your status wow. in the public eye. We've heard enough wow. about your stardom. Wow. Tell somebody about Jesus. Wow. Amen. Amen. Lift up Jesus. For he said, if I be lifted. Up. I will draw all men unto me. Right. I know it's an old-fashioned message. Come on, Amen. 
But I still believe that the Jesus that caused Granny to shout around the washing yeah, machine amen. is still enough today. Right. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Brother Billy, let's talk about the great yeah. mysteries. Let's talk about the deep things. Let's talk about getting together a church, getting all the churches together and making a one world religion. Listen, that ain't never going to happen. Yeah. That ain't never going to happen if you continue to stand for Jesus. Amen. Because in order to bring all the religions together, you're going to have to put Jesus on the back burner. You're going to have to not be so fanatical about Jesus. You're going to have to be willing to swallow some of their garbage. Amen? Yes. i got news for you. Amen. Anything that takes the focus off of Jesus ain't of God. Amen? Amen. Anything true. that takes the focus off of Jesus is not of God. Come on, Brother Billy. He, the Bible says that the Father has given the Son, teaches us this, all power. Right. He has exalted His name right. above every name. name. So if you deny Jesus, yeah. there ain't no hope for you. Amen. Amen. Until you discover that you've Absolutely. went the wrong way. It's Jesus or nothing else. Yes. Amen. And now they'll, they'll use the Scripture to twist it and make it sound like that the power is in you. And one of the damnable things about the power of positive thinking and the power of positive confession is that People walk away believing yeah. that even though they haven't accepted Jesus, yeah. even though they don't have faith in Jesus, maybe they don't even believe in Jesus, still they believe that the promises that that preacher is promising them are for them. Come on. Amen. Amen. Still they believe. I even read one post where a woman had, who had heard that sermon, The Power of I Am, and she said, I'm not even a believer. And this sermon helped me to understand that the power is within me. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. The power is, that's why they can boast and say, well, we've got Muslims that sit alongside of our people and worship right along with us. We've got homosexuals because they don't preach against sin. Amen. Wow. We've, got, we've got Buddhists. We've got all kinds of religions that sit in our congregation every Sunday wow. and they don't feel any conviction. They just lift up their hands to their God or bow or whatever they do yeah. alongside all the Christians. We're just wow. getting along like we're supposed wow. to. That's because you ain't preaching nothing. Amen. Wow. The minute you begin to preach like Paul did, Jesus yeah. Christ and Him crucified Amen. You begin to suffer some of the persecution that Paul suffered, but you'll realize there is only hope. You're not doing them any good. If they're a Muslim, they walk in a Muslim and walk out a Muslim, and they didn't hear no truth. They didn't feel no conviction. They didn't have no word planted. You're not doing them any good. As a matter of fact, you're making them think they're okay the way they are. You're making them believe they're all right the way they are. They don't need God. They don't need Jesus because the power is within them. Yeah. That is the backbone of the positive, the, the self-esteem, the uh, name it and claim it, the power of positive confession and the power of positive thinking. That is the backbone of that doctrine today. On, when, you, when you dig down to where it's at, Right. You find a closet full of skeletons. True. Amen. True. You find the fact that this ain't no new thing. Yeah. And it didn't come from God. This was a doctrine that was birthed in the bowels of the devil years and years and years and years oh. and eons ago. Amen. Oh. You'll find out that this is a doctrine that was birthed in hell. That you don't need God. You can be your own God. Yeah. Amen. And I got news for you. My message today is to let you know you ain't nothing without Him. You can do nothing without Him. There is no hope without Him. And I'm talking about Jesus. Amen. I ain't talking about Buddha. I ain't talking about Allah. I'm not talking about the universe or in God we trust. Amen. I'm talking about Jesus Christ, the hope of the world. The only way. Yes. The only truth. Right. Say, preacher, you're narrow-minded. That's all right. It's a narrow way. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You're not. You don't have. A, you don't have enough economical spirit about you. I hope I don't ever get it. Come on. Amen. Come on. I hope I don't ever catch that. Really? That sounds like that could be some kind of deadly disease. Come on. Amen. If you've been diagnosed with economicalism, you're in trouble. Yeah. And but one cure for you. True. And that's to realize that Jesus Christ is the only way. I'll tell Amen. Amen. So they teach according to what we can do, what we can confess, yeah. uh -huh. that we have the same power in our voice or in our words that God has 
in His. Now we're talking about Jesus this morning. Amen. All right. First John four and four says, "Ye are of God, little children, right. and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world." Now, a lot of the positive confession and the positive thinking and all of that goes back to a scripture in Ephesians three and twenty mm -hmm. that talks about according to the power that worketh in us. Yeah. The entire uh, verse says, Now unto Him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Come on. Then they use this scripture, according to the power that worketh in us. Mm -hmm. Now in order to understand that, we must rightly divide the word of truth. Yeah. And find out what that power is. True. That power that works within us is not the power of positive thinking. That oh. power that works within us is not the power of positive confession. Amen? Amen. That power that works within us is... The Part of the scripture that I just read you there in John, 1 John 4 and 4. Greater is He that is in you. And He ain't talking about David Fentress. All right. He's not saying greater is He. That right. self of, of, of Schleese Butler. Greater is Schleese Butler than he that is in the world. No. There's somebody else in you. If you're born again, been bought and paid for by the blood of the Lamb, right. there's somebody else in you today where it resides all power. And it's not yourself. It's not your own mortal carnal man. It's Jesus. Amen. True. Prove that with Scripture, preacher. I believe Absolutely. Will. The Bible says, To whom... God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, yeah. which is Christ in you, right. the hope of glory. glory. Christ right. in you, you, the hope of glory. So what is that power that works within us? What is that power? That power is Jesus Christ, right. who is the hope of glory. Right. Amen? Paul would bring it down to where he would teach that there's no good thing within me other than Jesus Christ. Amen? I can do nothing without Him. Through Him I can do all things. Without Him I can do nothing. We cannot be victorious unless we preach Jesus. We cannot have victory unless we preach Jesus. We cannot be set free unless we preach Jesus. Amen. Amen. Exactly. You can preach your power positive mess all you want. Right. But it ain't going to do nobody no good. Exactly. They'll feel better about themselves in this life. Come on. Come on, preach. But I believe it was James that said, What is this life? But a vapor. It appeareth for a little while and soon vanished away. Amen. Amen. True. We got to get back to preaching Jesus. Amen. Because he's still more than us. Right. Amen. True. Paul would say, I can do all things through Christ. Through Christ who strengthened, not through power of positive thinking. All right. Not within myself. Right. But I can do all things through Christ. Amen. Amen. So you see in these scriptures where the focus is at. The focus is not on self. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul, most of his writings would try and get us not to focus on self. Right. Amen. Amen. Paul would be the one that would say, and this is not a quote, but he would say, if he was talking to Brother Sleece today, he would say, the things that I don't want to do, I wind up doing them. Right. Amen? Come on. And the things that I want to do, <laughs> I end up not doing those at all. <laughs> Amen? Come on. Paul's talking about self. Right. Your self stinks. Right. Your self is not good enough. If you could do this thing, Jesus would not have had to come and die on the cross. Amen? Right. If you were able, if you were enough, if your works were good enough, if your self was good enough, if your positive confession was good enough, Jesus could have stayed on the throne. On, but God became flesh and dwelt among us and died on an old rugged cross because you are not able without Him. Amen. You're not able That's right. without Him. Amen? Amen. He would teach the disciples uh -huh. that He was the vine. Yeah. In other words, He was the tree and they were the branches. Come on. And unless they stayed connected to Him, they could do nothing. All right. Amen. He would teach them it would be as if if you took a limb, cut it off and cast it to the side. What happens to the limb? Dying. It dies. 
It's got green leaves on it yes. and it's alive until you separate it from the vine. You separate it from the tree. Right. The minute you separate it from Jesus, you begin to die. The minute we begin to focus on any other doctrine other than Jesus and Him crucified, we begin to die. The minute we begin to exalt man above Jesus, we begin to die. Our, our right. spiritual man begins to starve to death. Amen. Right. The minute we begin to exalt anything or anybody above Glory Jesus. See, our focus today shouldn't be on heaven. Come on, brother. Amen. Come on. I love heaven. Yes. I want to go to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Right. Amen. Amen. I'm going to heaven. Yes. But my focus should be on Jesus. Right. Amen. Yes. If your focus today, and many are, no. listen to them, is on angels. Right. Many people focus on angels. Come on. Angelic <laughs> visits. Mm. Angelic stardust and feathers and... Mm. If your focus is angels, and you get around some of them, that's all they talk about. Yeah. All they talk about is angels. Right. I got news for you. We got a higher power today. Amen. Than angels. Amen. God. There's a higher power. Yes. Right. Amen. We even have some people that pray to dead saints. Amen. My Lord. Because their focus is not on Jesus. Yeah. It's on dead saints. It's it's very prevalent in the in the Catholic doctrine. Right. Amen. Right. Very prevalent. I, uh -huh. I worked with a woman. Her son lost her billfold, uh, his billfold, mm. and we were sitting there at the table at, on our break, and she said, "My son lost his billfold last night." Yeah. And we prayed to Saint. I don't know if it was Andrew or who it was. It's supposed to be the the patron of lost things. Uh -huh. And we prayed to Saint whoever was say Andrew. We prayed to St. Andrew. About 15 minutes later, he called me. He said he found his billfold. I said, well, he might have found his billfold. But it ain't because Andrew had anything to do about it. <laughs> Nowhere in this book do you find where we were ever told to pray to any angels or any dead saints. All right. Amen. All right. As a matter of fact, the Bible says there ain't but one mediator between God and man. Right. And that's Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Ain't but one way. If you want your petition taken before the throne, unless you take it in Jesus' name, it ain't going. On, Amen. Brother. Jesus and Him crucified. Right. That's what I'm determined to know today. Yeah. Because I've had the other stuff. I've listened to the other stuff, and it don't mount right. a hill of beans. So if your focus is on heaven, you're looking at the wrong thing. If your focus is on angels, what about the gifts? We hear a lot of people yeah. talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Right. Now the gifts of the Spirit are important. Right. They are for the, they're for the nurturing and for the maturation of the church, and right. they should be working in our midst. Right. But we've got people that focus more on the gifts than they do Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's true. How about the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Got any Pentecostals here today? Amen. If our focus is more on the Holy Ghost than it is Jesus, our stuff's out of whack. Oh, come on. Amen. Come on, pray. Whoa, Brother Billy, what are you talking about? I'm talking about a name above every name. Yeah. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about in whom all power, the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Jesus. I'm talking about all power in heaven and earth given to not the Holy Ghost, but to Jesus. Amen. Besides, you know what the Holy Ghost does? The Holy Ghost exalts Jesus. Yeah. The Holy Spirit leads you to Jesus. Right. The Holy Spirit is focused on Jesus. That's what He does. He ministers to you about Jesus. Amen. Right. So if you've got your eyes and your mind more on the Holy Ghost and the gifts than you do Jesus, you're in trouble today. Amen. Amen. Oh. Because our focus should be on Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If your focus today is more on the work mm -hmm. and the ministry, yeah. Oh, than it is on Jesus. And that can get you in trouble today too. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, anything that takes your eyes off of Jesus. Come on. Some people don't have time for Jesus because they're too busy working for Him. All right. That make any sense? <laughs> they don't have time to pray. Yeah. They don't have time to study. That's right. They don't have time because they're too busy working for the Lord. Right. And they've lost sight of the one that they're supposed to be doing the work for. Yes. Amen. Amen. We find somebody like that in the book of Luke, the 10th chapter. You can turn there if you want to. Luke 10 and 39. We find somebody there. They wasn't doing a bad thing. Yeah. They just didn't have their priorities straight. Come on. Luke 10 and 39 talks about Jesus going to Mary and Martha's house. And we've read this over and over. 
Luke 10 and 39. Of course, you know, most church don't have to worry about this because they're not wrapped up in the work of God. Amen. 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 Oh, they're wrapped up in some stuff that ain't really the Lord's work. <laughs> yeah. Amen. They work so many hours they don't have time for Jesus. Right. They go to school so many hours they don't have time for Jesus. Amen. They got so many things going at home they don't have time for Jesus. So it ain't really so much that I don't see that many people around here so wrapped up in church work that I have to say it's time y'all go home. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> so we get wrapped up, tangled up, tied all up into things. It ain't necessarily always church work, but sometimes it is. So Jesus goes to Mary and Martha's house and he's going to need some supper. Mm -hmm. So there's some work that had to be done. Amen? Oh, but that wasn't what was supposed to be done first. Right. Talking about Mary and Martha. says she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet mm -hmm. and heard His word. Yeah. But Martha was covered about with much serving. Yeah. Now what was Martha doing? Was she doing bad things? No. She's in there fixing the Lord some supper. As a matter of fact, if you'd have been there, you might have been leaning more toward her uh, side than you were Mary's. Come on, bro. You might be. You might have looked in the kitchen and saw poor old Martha, flyer on her face, on, wiping bro. the sweat off her forehead. Yeah. Nobody's in there helping Martha. She's in there trying to fix the Lord's supper. Where's Mary at? Oh, well, Mary's in there sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to His word. So you might have took Martha's side on this. And Martha wasn't doing a bad thing. You don't have to be doing a bad thing for you to get your eyes off of Jesus. Amen? devil don't have to get you busy in sin. He just got to get you busy. Yeah. Amen? He just got to get you busy, get your eyes off of Jesus. And Martha was covered about with much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Better therefore that she help me. Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Amen. But one thing is needful. In other words, one thing is more important. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. If I could say something to the busy church world as we know it today, who, like the church of the Laodiceans, they were busy busy doing different things. It may not even mean bad things. <laughs> it would be the same words that Jesus spoke to Martha. Church, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But you've left something undone. We're careful and troubled many churches to feed the homeless and that's a good thing. We're careful and troubled to have activities and different things go on in the church to keep people interested, keep people involved. But we friend, it looks like we're doing the right things. We're saying the right things. We're doing the right kind of work. But we've left one ingredient out. You know, you can mess up a recipe if you leave out one ingredient. Amen. That's right. I made some breadsticks one time and they came in a box and they had a little pack of yeast with them. And you're supposed to mix the yeast with the with the the uh, flour right. before you mix the dough up. Right. I mixed the dough up, put the breadsticks in the oven, and for the life of me, couldn't figure out why the breadsticks were flat in the fritter and wouldn't rise. Yeah. It's cause I had I turned around, and I left the yeast laying on the table. Right. They wasn't very good. <laughs> You can mess up everything by leaving out one ingredient. Come on. The church has messed up everything by leaving out one ingredient. The church of the layout of sins had missed the ball completely because they left out the most important thing. Jesus standing outside knocking on the door yeah. while they're in there proclaiming we're rich. We're increased with goods. We have need of nothing. But Jesus was telling them without me, on, you are blind, you are miserable, you are naked. Amen? That's His message to the church today. Without me. See, He's a jealous God. Yes, sir. Amen? True. He's a jealous God. You think your wife's jealous. She ain't got nothing on the Lord. Amen? Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and no other gods. Amen? Jesus is saying to the church today, you've left me outside the box. You're doing a lot of things. You think you're doing a lot of good work and you think you're rich and increased with goods, but you're naked and blind and miserable without me. 
That's where we find the modern day church today. Amen. 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 Without the message of Jesus, there is no hope. Right. Without the message of Jesus, there is no life. Right. Without the message of Jesus, there is no peace. Without the praying. message of Jesus, without Him in the recipe, you have messed up the whole thing. Right. Amen. That's what about those people that came and knocking and wanting in and saying, Lord, we healed in Your name. Mm -hmm. We cast out devils. Yeah. We did a lot of things in Your name. Right. They were like the people over there in the book of Acts. Amen. In the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. Right. Amen. It surprised you today to know how many pastors got up but in front of mega churches today. Right. And preached or taught or whatever it was they did. True. And the pastor don't even know Jesus. Amen. They interviewed one pastor, wanted his name and stuff kept out of the news. Uh -huh. He said, Well, I preach every Sunday. Yeah. I don't even know if I believe it. Mm. I don't even know if I believe it. No. You'd be surprised how I many preachers don't know what they believe. All right. Amen. Come on, preach. Even had some of them on TV. Yes. Amen. On. on interview shows that told on themselves. Right. Talking to thousands every Sunday. Yeah. Don't even know that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Right. Amen. Come on. Oh. Preach. We better get back to preaching Jesus. Right. Amen. Amen. That's the last day message. Right. That was the first day message. Amen. That's always been the message. Amen. Right. Yeah. We've got preachers that say, Oh, God's given me the last day message. Well, yeah, He's given it all to us right here. Right. From Genesis to Revelation, the message has always been Jesus. Amen. Amen. From the coats that the Lord clothed them with in the Garden of Eden, amen, all the way to the Lamb that John's seen in the book of Revelation, amen, wow. it's always been Jesus. Amen. It's always been Jesus. Right. Amen. That's the message today. Right. And if we're going to have life, if we're going to have hope, mm. if we're going to have peace, right. we're going to have to talk about Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to have to get back to preaching right. Jesus. Because if you're out there today and you don't have no hope, the only place you're going to find it is Jesus. If you're out there today and you don't have any peace, the only place you're going to find it is Jesus. I know I'm old-fashioned. I know some people say I'm crazy, stupid, and unlearned, but I still believe Jesus is all that I need. Amen. I told you last Sunday, He's all that I got and He's more than enough. Amen. He's all that I got and He's all that I need. He's all that I got and He's more than enough. When Peter and John came to the crippled man, they supported they didn't have two dimes to run together, but Jesus was more than enough. Amen. He was all that they had. And he was more than that. Peter even told him as much so when he said, Silver and gold, I don't have any, but what I got, I'm going to give it to you. Oh, hallelujah. And that old crippled man was glad then that Peter and John was broke and busted, amen, and didn't have no money because then he got up off his crippled bed and he walked. Why? Because Jesus. That's what Peter and John offered him. Amen. They could have walked up there and said, Listen, buddy. If you'll just start confessing something positive, right. you can get up off that. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Amen? Uh -huh. I don't know exactly how I feel about this, but you know, you tell some people, well, I'm sick, and they'll be like, oh, don't, don't say that. Yeah. No, just say you're well. You know, you're coughing your head off, you have your eyeballs running, noses running, you're supposed to walk around saying, I ain't sick, I ain't sick. Mm -hmm. Well, they could have told that crippled man that. Right. Quit confessing that you're crippled every day. Begin to speak positive. Begin to think positive. And then maybe you won't be crippled no more. Amen? No. Because that wouldn't do that man no good. Jesus is what that man needed. These people over here that live in tents and live in huts and live in cardboard boxes don't need you to tell them to start confessing their prosperity in God. They need you to come and tell them that no matter who you are, no matter what's wrong, no matter what's going on, what you've done and where you've been, Jesus Christ will save your soul and lift you up out of the miry clay and put your feet on the rock to stay. Hallelujah. And you may not have a mansion on this side of heaven. Right. But he's went to prepare you one. Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Guaranteed. You may not have riches and wealth on this side of heaven. Guaranteed. But you have a heavenly treasure. Yes. Laid up. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The prosperity gospel won't help you. The power of positive thinking won't help you. Come on. Jesus. Jesus is where you help that. Yes, sir. Jesus is who we preach. Jesus is who we have to offer. 
Amen. And if you need something besides Jesus, you're in the wrong place. You're listening to the wrong preacher. Because that's all we got. And He's more than enough. Yeah. Someone else this morning have something before we go. I preached a little longer than I intended to.